G'day, this is Bruce and welcome to my shop. And this is Getter Out number 17. We've got a, a bearing housing here uh, with a frozen M16 bolt. Uh, it's already been attacked with, um, with heat and uh, some other implements of destruction uh, with, uh, and f that's failed. So I'm now going to um, get this out. And the way I'm going to do it is I'm going to machine off this the residual bolt right down to the flat section here so that I can ascertain exactly where I am in the center. I'm going to do a center drill and I'm going to progressively drill it out. Hopefully I might be able to get it out with uh, the easy out. I have no confidence whatsoever. So we'll probably just progressively go up until we've got the tapping size of the, um, of the thread. If that fails, uh, if we fail to get it out, uh, then we'll just continue drilling it out until we get to a uh, insert diameter and we'll put a new insert in there. So off we go. Well, I'll bring this in a little bit closer so you can see more of the action. Let's see how we go. Hopefully I won't do any damage to my camera while we're doing this. Um, so we'll let the noise begin. If you'd like to work a bit quicker than that, so we'll swap over to high speed and then uh, low speed motor on high speed uh, high speed gearing. That's better. Nothing scientific about it, we're just hacking away. Might give it a bit of fluid. I can't transfer the smell of this to your uh, to the camera, so uh, you'll just have to believe me. It does have a distinct smell about it. It just take a little bit less off each time now. This cutter has three carbide tips. Save the steel bolt, of course. There's only a single bolt holding all this together onto the plate and two bolts down onto the end so I don't want to be too aggressive.
always looking to reduce the amount of metal I have to drill through. Hence the reason I'm doing it. And especially after somebody's attacked it with some pretty, um, pretty brutal um, tactics, then um, quite often the bolt will be bent a little bit and so if you get the centre of the bolt when it's protruding out, it's not necessarily the centre of the bolt that you want to get to. And the, and the whole trick with well, one of the tricks with, uh, with the getter out, as I've said on many occasions, is to get in the guts. If you're in the centre, you're halfway home. bolt on the other side um, okay we struck gold we'll close it down. Give it a bit of a puffy puffy here. Get rid of that. Have a look and see through the camera's eye and see what we're looking at here. Uh, we'll try and come in a bit closer, maybe even. Maybe go down a bit. Not really helpful there, is it? It doesn't seem to be that. That well in focus. I'll leave it like that. That should focus up better. Okay. All right. So we're now going to change our um, our heads and start the. That wasn't supposed to happen, but this is the problem. As we get older, um, we get dropsies. It's all part of the arthritis and uh, problems in the neck. Uh, there's uh, very little we can do about that. We've just got to live with it. So you'll notice occasionally I do drop things. But having wood on the floor here. And... Um, <coughs> and mattresses everywhere in the, in the shape of these carpets. Uh, it, does, it does help the cause a bit. go at getting into the centre here. See if we can have any luck with that. It's, it's all it's all an eyeball thing of course. But as close as we can get will be nice. But one way we can do it is by using our uh, using our little rule and this rule um, I don't know if we do it so well but this rule goes it's got a zero in going in both directions so it's quite handy for finding centers of things uh, to a degree at any rate um, so it does it does help a bit and we get that in the center and then we move just a table to suit. Eyeballing it looks pretty well, pretty good anyway. We shall um, 
carry on attacking. Once I drill in a bit, we'll see. It actually looks a bit off to me. Um, but I'm not too concerned because we can always bring it back later with a with a mill. Now it looks to me from too far in that direction. It should be a little bit further this way. Okay, we'll drill a little bit deeper. Nothing to be lost by that. So I might just put a little, a little uh, mill in there and see if I can bring that centre back in a bit. So this little three millimetre one might. Uh, might help me just bring it in. I have to be careful here, of course, it is quite uh, minute. a better centre. But it's very hard to tell because of the butchery around here and thread here and thread there but well, hopefully that'll be okay. the 6mm just to establish this better. It may look a bit laborious the way I'm going about all this but uh, it is what it is and everybody's got their own way of doing things and to say the most important thing is the end result. I just want to define this so that when we come in with the twist wheel Coming with the twist rule, we got, we're not going to be in the way a little bit. That's it. Now, um, it's an end mill, so it, it wants to um, walk away a little bit. Now, we'll give that a go with a um, Something like about an eight and a half mil drill bit. Then swap over to a lower speed. See if we can get some action here. said before, important, the most important thing for me is to get through the stuff so that I know exactly how far I have to go with whatever. So if even any piloting of any sort, we want to get down and get through first. And that then tells us if, we're, if the stud is bottomed out or not. 
If it's bottomed out, the problem could be a lot harder. But if it drops like this is going to drop down, we know we now know that 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 stud is probably somewhere in the vicinity of um, 15, about 12 to 15 millimetres long. So that gives us a proportion a proportion to this problem. Now, I don't for a second believe that I'm going to be able to get this out with my favourite easy out. Um, that's the favourite easy out, and that's just about we're just about on on song as far as um, drill the drill size is concerned. I've got one here. This is um, this is five six. It's eleven thirty second. So we're pretty close with that eight mil. But I'm not even going to bother. I'm just going to continue drilling up. Uh, we'll get a bit more depth um, here for the larger drills. And we might even give it a go at, at putting the left hand half inch one in and see if that'll do the job. That's a, that's a 12 millimetre left hander. May work, but again it may not. Yeah, here we go. I've got to go it a lot slower with this one. trick that we're looking to apply here is to reduce the amount of pressure of the thread area itself. Now if this has been uh, had um, a lot of a lot of pull on it, it is very likely that the um, that the threads have, have locked themselves up on a medium onto the stainless. Now we'll see that um, there'd be no sign there that uh, this it wants to cooperate so we'll just go up a little bit bigger I'll see what the, the tapping size is for for three quarter uh, for the 16 mil and we'll apply that Okay, this is a 14, we need to run down here with a 14 mil, so we'll change heads again. Paper fellow in here. We need a uh, socket.
go down a bit more. Um, I'm not sure whether all of you are aware, but th these these ends, the bulb and the and the other side of it, are hardened. However, the face here is not; it's soft, and that's a very good way. And you'll see plenty of marks on on these ones of mine of knocking something in because it is soft. Right now, we'll take that back up again. We're now tacking this with a tape, with a um, with the tapping size, of course. We'll swap back over to forward. Give her a bit more of this uh, ugly black stuff. As you can see we're getting flaking um, threads are starting to flake and that's what we want to uh, accomplish so we'll just keep moving on see how it's uh, starting to pull that thread out so we'll just keep working and at some point in time She'll probably try and grab it and take it for a walk uh, further down into that uh, virgin territory. Okay, so what we've got here, we've got a grab. We've got a grab, and um, this is a an old uh, an old drill that's had a bit of battering. And we've already it's pulled out some of the thread. See that? And there's some uh, some more to come. So we'll just keep going. Now this old drill. Uh, as I said, it's um, had, a, had a beating and um, the tang of it had been destroyed, but I didn't want a really extra sharp one on here either um, because, uh, because it, it has that tendency to grab and break the drill, whereas with, if it's dull, there's less, less chance of that happening. As we go, we've got we pulled out it doesn't sound nice, it's very ugly. But we're getting those we managed to get those threads out. The one little bit has decided to go all the way down to the bottom. She bounces like that, that means we've caught it. So, there's a good chance that our get her out 17 has been quite successful. We've got bits and pieces here all over the place. Um, we'll give it a bit of a blow. looks a bit ugly down the bottom there. I think they've got some yeah we've got some loose bits down there so that's they'll come out. And, um, operation has been a success the patient hasn't died quite yet. Now what I'm seeing here 
But there's actually a coil in here, there's a helicoil in here. So um, I may end up having to take that coil out. So what we'll do is we'll manoeuvre this aside and um, we'll have a squiz of it. More bits and pieces down there. But of course this is stainless so magnets not going to help us. Some bits. There we go. There's the last of the bolt. Where are we? Well, there's the last piece of the bolt. So that's it. I'm going to be cleaning this up, trying a bolt in it. If it's all good, fine. If not, I'll be removing this recoil, cleaning up the thread, and running a new coil in there. Thank you very much.